Hey Bat fans, Luke here, back with a late review, and today we're going to take a look at uh, Batman Detective Comics issue number 978, which serves as the next installment of the Batman Eternal storyline. Uh, this is a late review because I just got my books today from last week, so uh, issue with DCBS and UPS, and I'm not going to go into any further, uh, but that's why yeah, this video is late. Uh, hopefully, my books come in by this weekend for this week's. So I really do want to talk about this next installment of Batman, which has Tony S. Daniel back on art for Batman. So that's a nice little return back to nostalgia lane for me. Um, Tony S. Daniel's art has always been good on Batman. I loved it during the Grant Morrison run. And even his run on Batman, which was really good as far as the art, and it, on the Tecta comics, the art was good. As always, his his uh, storytelling was a little suspect. But Tony S. Daniel doing Batman art again, I'm down. So I'm excited. So hopefully that comes uh, on time this week. And uh, for this issue, we have uh, James Tynan in the fourth office to continue writing duties. And art, we have Javier Fernandez. Now, I know he was on the last issue of uh, Detective. And... If you don't know Fernandez, he was on for a majority of the run during Tim Seeley's uh, run on Nightwing. And I remember the art in Nightwing during Rebirth, during his run, was just absolutely superb. And while Eddie Burrows does the cover on this particular issue, and I will say one thing, it's kind of like a one that kind of stuck out to me a little bit on this cover. Well, I like the designs Burroughs does here, and I love the color palette. Oh, by the way, um, the variant cover this month, or this installment, this is the uh, Superman-themed uh, variant for this particular issue, which was done by, um, oh, total brain fart, um, Francis Manipal. There it is. Um, just absolutely great, and the one I'm really looking forward to is Batman. That one is it's a Jim Lee cover, and it is great. Obviously, this is a celebration of Action Comics reaching issue number 1,000. So, on this particular installment of Detective, I would actually give the nod to uh, Manipole's art, because it is just beautiful. But, um, this cover is okay. The only thing that kind of stuck out to me in this, um, in this cover is that... You see Batwing and uh, Azrael and Kate saluting, and um, continue. I mean, just go ahead and consider me a military stickler for detail. But um, you salute with your red hand, or with your red hand, your right hand, and they're saluting with their left. So, kind of take it for what it is. It's just military history. I'm just kind of looking at it from that perspective, not being very correct, especially being. You know the the history behind the colony's organization, as you see there. You know the colony wants you. Um, obviously, the colony being a quasi-military organization, obviously because of the leader, Kate Kane's father, Colonel. But also, Kate has a military background as well. So, uh, I mean, it's a stickler for detail thing, but I'm sure maybe that was done on purpose too. So, either way, good cover. Other than just that one, one one little hiccup there with the cover, as far as which hand you're splitting with. But either way, the art in this issue, say one little minor detail, which I think I mentioned in the last issue, and I couldn't remember who did it, now I know who did it. Uh, it, it deals with eyes, but I think the art in this issue is really cool. Uh, Fernandez just really hitting on all cylinders in this issue, and then, then there's two pages in particular. Uh, Batman going up to um, Kate, the, the Kane Manor right here. It is just that's awesome. Um, not very. I don't want to say detail is not the right word. Uh, it, it's a, use a lot of sketch and execution, but it's done really absolutely superbly. And, and the colors by Kalees, I think it's Kalees who does the colors on this one. Yeah, John Kalees does a really good job using a really dark muted color palette to really accentuate the mood. Uh, I saw this splash page and I was just like, that is just beautiful. And there was another page with uh, Batman meeting with Kate and Colonel Kane, uh, which I just thought, again, it's just beautifully executed. Um, relatively simple in concept, but executed 
with absolute perfection. I really like this um, two-page display of Fernandez's art in this, and I love his Batman design. Um, so the art is great. Um, again, you see some of the eyes. There's Tim with the eye. I mean, you know, he's got the mask on. I think Batman, you get a little case of the eyes, too. I think when he's going into the Batman, yeah, there it is. Case of the eyes. Again, that's just a preference thing. I'm not really a big, huge fan of seeing Batman's peoples when he got the cowl. But the art in this throughout is great. And I guess, obviously, the cliffhanger in this. Uh, spoiler warning. Uh, the transformation of uh, Tim in this was also really well done. Uh, another maybe quasi gripe a little bit with the art. When you get the smaller panels, um, Fernandez really doesn't go as far depth as far as going into detail of some of the character models. Uh, be that as it is, um, it's just skipping out a little bit on the detail. Like right there, there's like no facial details in a panel. I get it small and I get that, but but other than that, take out those little gripes here and there. I thought the art in this was just absolutely fantastic. And the story in this, it kind of continues on what we saw last issue in that uh, if we recall that there were two members of the colony who attacked these gangsters and used excessive force. Um, when uh, Batman and Tim were kind of providing Overwatch, and they actually started to uh, attack Batman and Tim, as you kind of see, kind of like a kind of like a flashback of what's actually happening in another great two-page splash uh, by Fernandez. And we find out that we kind of saw in the last issue that it was not really the members of the colony who were actually doing. There was an outside force. Obviously, with the general, Ulysses uh, Grant, um, or Ulysses, oh boy, why am I having a complete brain fart? It's not Ulysses S. Grant, that's a general, oh my lord. Um, why am I having, a, I'm having trouble with his full name? <laughs> wow, this is kind of awkward. Um... General Ulysses, uh, Ulysses Armstrong, there it is, Ulysses Armstrong and Ulysses Grant, oh my lord, um, I like Civil War history, so I'm kind of brain for that one, but either, what we find out is that not only that um, the general uh, was using some sort of tech we thought was the, you know, the brother I, to kind of influence the actions of members of the colony, but we see more to it in this that there's it's not as simple as just that. Um, we find out that the general has input a whole bunch of nanotech into several people, to put it lightly, that kind of transforms these uh, members who are infected with the nanovirus and obviously they lose total control and we actually see in this issue that there's actually more to it than that they actually transform to you know spoilers <laughs> uh, members of the OMAC the one man army uh, corps and and there's this this force that Ulysses is going to use to get revenge on uh, the colony and as well as uh, Batman as well and and that that's generally the story uh, there's some good plots in this and there's some bad as well so obviously Fernandez again he's the one who's kind of really the showrunner in this particular issue and while the story wasn't bad there was a couple things that kind of I'm not going to say cringe but made me kind of scratch my head a little bit with uh, Tinian's writing in this uh, the one thing I thought was really well was there was a conversation that happened between uh, Batman and uh, Kate and Colonel Kane and uh, and um, Martha, the, obviously the mother of Bruce, in their old home. So obviously when Colonel Kane and Martha are growing up, and we're actually trying to, there's some some middle ground that's actually trying to be worked here. And one thing I did like, but Tynan did in this, is that 
you're seeing a somewhat of a empathetic Kateness in that she's realizing that you know again the colony's trying to do something different. This whole thing with Gotham that is she's clearly saying, hey, that's that is your responsibility, Bruce. We're not trying to do anything to kind of step on your toes in this. The um, the colony has a, a global mission. So what happened at now uh, with those foot soldiers from the colony? That was not them. She's she's shown proof and evidence that you know this was obviously someone's trying to frame her, and she's initially leaning towards Tim. She's trying to say, hey, you know, well obviously with future Tim coming down, I have my suspicions that Tim was behind this, and Tim did the exact same thing kind of in reverse of saying, hey, also they know that um, those generals were up to no good and that he's implying that it was obviously Kate Kane who actually had a part in it. So there's some fingers being pointed at each other between Kate and Tim, which kind of makes sense based off of the things we're seeing in the story kind of develop. But what I like about this is that Kate's trying to mend a little bit the relationship with uh, between her and Bruce. And I kind of like that. And Batman is not that all dismissive as well. Um, Colonel Kane in this, uh, he was kind of being condescending a little bit. But that, that's to be expected. And you kind of see some some back history of the Kane family. Also them growing up in this house. And you know, the thing of the, their family motto. Like we all stand together. Which I thought was kind of cool. Because you can kind of see that kind of. In a way, being tinkered around with, obviously, with the faction that Kate is trying to form with the Colony and Batwing and Azrael. In that, we have our own mission, but, you know, we don't want to be enemies with you, Bruce. We still kind of want to stand together with you. We're just kind of doing our own thing. So, I kind of like what Tynan kind of did with this. Didn't make Kate just the straight-up villain in this. She's kind of using her cooler head in this, which I, I did like one conversation that made me initially the first one that made me pause for concern in this is that Cass comes in in the back cave when Tim's trying to do the analysis of these two uh, colonies foot soldiers to see what actually what's going on that's when he finds out that hey there's actually nanotech that's making them do what they did but he had this conversation with Cass where I just thought it was really dismissive and not maybe in totally in line with Tim as a character, because I think Tim would show some more empathy of this as well. And it comes up at a point in the conversation that he's having with Cass about obviously Clayface and what Clayface meant as a friend to her. And you remember back in the stories where Clayface uh, kind of started doing these reenactment of uh, you know, classic plays with Cass and whatnot. So it was a bonding activity they had with each other. Well, Tim kind of, what he did in the beginning of the conversation was like, hey, you know, I'm gonna, I'm, do you want, to be a, want me to be your new partner? We can kind of reenact, you know, what do you say? Hey, I know you're working on Tempest, but Midsummer Night Dream was always my favorite. And I think that's still kind of a, a fresh wound for Cass and someone who, can show some empathy as someone like I think Tim can kind of maybe cross the line a little bit kind of knowing how important that was with Cass and and what it meant as far as her relationship with Clayface I just thought that was really not empathetic at all and kind of out of Tim's character and I thought that was just a way to kind of a cheap ploy to kind of move the plot along to put the connection between to really point out how these general, these uh, not generals, uh, these foot soldiers were actually controlled through the, the nanotech. So I, I thought it was kind of a cheap ploy just to kind of connect the dots, as we kind of see here. Um, well, I did find a point in nanovash was kind of interesting. It just how those two points were kind of built together kind of made me weird a little bit. Also, while I think the point with the nanotech is interesting. I don't remember any point in the story that kind of articulated the point that the general was infecting people, one of them being Tim, you know, spoilers, um, with this nanovirus. I, I don't know how, I know he said he has tech, but I don't remember it showing 
the general kind of affecting these people with this nanovirus. So I don't know how it happened. It was just kind of gleamed over pretty quickly. So I thought that one was kind of weird. But the one thing that really stood out to me is just really quickly developed and not doing so in any type of what's the word I'm looking for synthesized manner is that we all know the general had his own ulterior motive to being what why he's doing what he's doing but he went like straight psychosocial <laughs> if you're a Slipknot fan, you'll kind of get that, but he went straight psychosocial on this issue, and it happened really abruptly. He just went nuts um, when he kind of shaves his head, and he's kind of using the old general moniker, as you see here, as he's making the, the decision to implement this, this contingency plan he had, and it just, he wasn't right to begin with, but just the way it was just a really abrupt and sudden character switch to him just being just a complete mental case in this and it just came like and you're reading the issue I know he's kind of watching Batman kind of go from the Batcave to the Kane Manor and obviously he's observing Tim through the Brother Eye technology but he goes from one page just looking and observing to just snapping out of nowhere so I thought that was kind of abrupt uh, but other than that um it's interesting, obviously, the cliffhanger, I kind of showed it to you. This does kind of lead some points of intrigue as far as going forward, how this is going to kind of play out. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it was fun. It was a good read. But the things that kind of stuck out to me, there was a couple ones, again, just kind of made me scratch my head a little bit. So, I mean, all in all, this was good. Um, again, kind of in hindsight, some of the the character execution as far as the traits and the tropes that kind of make what the characters are were kind of sacrificed a little bit in this. Especially Tim and his conversation with Cass and the general just going straight psychosocial in this. But I did like the interactions uh, with Tim and Bruce. They're kind of doing their investigation, seeing some detective work, and this is always good. And obviously the conversation with Kate and Batman was... Really nice to see, but again, some of those ones like I kind of pointed out, I kind of scratched my head a little bit. If I had to rank this, I'd give it a 3 out of 5. I think this is definitely a kind of a step forward. I don't feel the whole impact of the, you know, the future kind of being known as abrupt in this issue. And you're, you're kind of seeing some things where you're kind of seeing the dots kind of connect to it. But you're also seeing some ways where you can kind of see some story deviation. Um, we definitely didn't see the OMAC part in this story kind of coming, to be honest, for me anyway. Um, we knew that Tim being a future Batman was obviously a ploy with the future stellar storytelling. But the development of the OMAC part of this story is one I didn't see. Also, obviously, the Brother I thing we knew was going to be huge, but the OMAC part... Uh, was interesting in itself. So now you're obviously could see a point now where Batman and and his and his team gonna have to work with the colony as well to kind of come together to take out the uh, the general and, and his influence. So either way, um, fun issue. Three out of five. A marked improvement over Detective as of late for me anyway. And I'm excited to see what's going on in uh, 979. See how this all kind of plays out. Uh, I'm interested. So, anyway, uh, that's my thoughts on uh, this installment of Detective Comics. Hit me up in the comments below, and we'll batch out about what you thought about this issue and kind of go from there. Uh, next video I will do this weekend. Again, it just whether or not it's going to be Batman 45, if I remember right, or it's going to be a an old Bat story. Uh, be honest, it's going to be Wyatt and Guy. I already read, re read it. I'm ready to go. It's just whether or not what I'm going to do that video for it. And come, you know, Saturday, Saturday morning, if I still haven't got my books yet and I haven't got a chance to read Batman 45, I'll defer and we'll talk about Wyatt and Guy. And if I get my books in time, then we'll talk Batman 45 and I'll save Wyatt and Guy for a rainy day. So, anyway, until next video, take care.